In this video, we learn about subsetting matrices in R. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and develop my matrix real quick. And I have videos on vectors, matrices, and so on. So if you're not sure what I'm doing right here, I recommend going and watching those videos real quick and then you'll know exactly how I'm constructing this matrix. So basically, this is the matrix I have and it's some students that have taken some tests and these are the scores that they achieved on those various tests. So now we can go ahead and select some subsets of this, this matrix and you know, break it apart and do some analysis and all that type of stuff. So first things first, let's keep it simple. Select a single value in our matrix. So there's a couple ways we can go ahead and do it. So first things first, you do the name of your matrix here, which we got M1 is the name of my matrix. And then we can select which row we want and then which column we want. And we can do it by position or by the actual name itself. So I'm gonna do position first and then I'll do it by the names. So let's say we want Amanda and test three. So this would be row one, two, three, and then column one, two, three. So if I do three comma three in here and run it real quick, I see 90, which is what we were expecting to get with three and three. Alternatively, I could go ahead and do M1 and then the name of the row, so Amanda, and I could do then test, test three. And note that I'm putting the quotes around the names here. You need to use those names if you're gonna be referencing the, the actual name of the row and column. So let's go ahead and run that real quick. And we get 90 as well. Alternatively, we can do a combination of them if we want to. So it could be like um, Amanda and three. And we get 90 again. So a bunch of different ways you could go ahead and select that single value um, out of the matrix. Also, let's say, let's what what would happen if we just put one one value in here, just three, and threw it in there? We get 57. So where did that number come from? So how it goes through the matrix is it goes one, two, three, so 57, 57. So those are our three, and then it would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So let's try 13 real quick, see if we get a 90. And there we go. So. It's 90 is the 13th value in our matrix. So that's what would happen if you put one value in here. Normally I don't I don't know why you would do that ever. You can go ahead and use the row and column values in order to navigate to the exact value you want. But yeah, if you throw one single number in there, that's how it counts through the matrix as it goes from top to bottom, uh, left to right on the columns. So just like that. All right, so moving on, enough of that single value stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about selecting subsets of these matrices. matrices. So if we want to select a single row of a matrix, one thing we could go ahead and do is let's stick with Amanda. Uh, let's go with row three comma and leave the, the column blank and run it real quick. And now we see Amanda's test scores, 57, 74, 90, 89, 58. And let me just run the matrix real quick so we can just see it easily. So there's Amanda scores and we see that we did select Amanda scores just like that. Um, well, we could do a combination of things as well. So if we want a couple people, let's say Nathan and Amanda, so we can throw in a, a combine and then one and three, just like that and comma to leave the columns blank. And now we get Nathan and Amanda. Uh, we could also go ahead and use another vector. So we could do one through three, just like that, and a comma. And now we get the top three people, Nathan, Chris, and Amanda. So if we scroll up, Nathan, Chris, Amanda, and we left Bill and Cindy off. So you can navigate through the matrices uh, by selecting values just like I'm doing here. But one thing you might've noticed is when I did this one right here, let me do it again real quick. We're not seeing the person's name over here. So we don't see that this is Amanda's scores right here. We have to memorize it or something like that. Um, so, so let's check something real quick. So is this actually a matrix? Do we think that this is a matrix? And highlight that whole thing and run it real quick. And we get a false statement. So this by itself, when we just select in one row by itself, it comes back not as a matrix. It comes back as a vector, vector. And M1, and three, and boom. So is vector true? So that's something to be mindful of if you think you're getting a matrix out of it. Um, you, you might not be if you're only selecting one row. And same is true if you select one column, as we'll show you in just a second here. But if you want 
it to be a matrix. You can throw in another comma here and then say drop is equal to false. Or you can just leave it as F, capital F, and run it real quick. And now we see that it is a true for a matrix. So the default here is drop is equal to true, which would drop the, the row name and that would make it a vector. However, if you wanted to say a matrix, you throw another comma in here and you drop equals F or false, and then you're not dropping that row name and you're keeping it as a matrix. So if we run this alone by itself real quick, we will see that we get Amanda's name in here and then we get the test scores. So we have our matrix just like we set up and we have the column names as well as the row name. So if you wanna keep that and keep it a matrix, remember that drop feature. And we're gonna do it a couple more times so you'll see, see it again with these columns. So selecting columns versus selecting rows is a similar concept. It's just which side of the uh, comma you're on, so M1. And so now that we're selecting columns, we'll leave the front blank and we'll just start with a comma and we'll go with three. So right now we'll, we're selecting test three, right? Because that's the third column in our matrix. So if I run this real quick, we see that I get the scores of people in column three. So Nathan got 100, Chris 99, Amanda 90, and so on. So if we come up here and Nathan 100, Chris 99, Amanda, Bill 53, Cindy 68, and that's what we see exactly right here. So we can go ahead and do different vectors as well, just like we did with the columns. So if we want to do a couple of tests, so M1 and say we want tests three through five, and we run that real quick, we see that we get a matrix here and we get tests three through five of all five students. And let's say I just wanted tests two and five for some reason, I could go in here M1 and throw in my bracket, comma, and combine. And what did I say, two and five? We'll, just, we'll go with two and five. So just like this. And so now I see all the test results for test two and test five, just like that. Also real quick, we can use names if we want to. So if we want to use particular uh, column names, we could go ahead and use those as well. Just like up here, when we're throwing in names, we can go ahead and do that same right here. So test two and test five. Just like that, we just looking at test two and test five of all five students. And then coming back here, remember this, is this a matrix? Matrix, and let me run it by itself real quick. We just highlight the text and we can go ahead and run it. So what do you think? Based off of what we did up here, we're pretty sure that this is a vector, right? It's a named vector. Uh, it's not a matrix though, because we don't have row names in this particular case. So if we check if this is a matrix, we get a false. But if we throw in a drop equals to false here and run it, we get a true. And then if we run this real quick, we get our matrix. So now I see test three, and then I see the individuals and their scores broken down like so. So again, if you want to get a matrix out of a like one vector row, you'll need to use that drop equals F argument in order to achieve that. So hopefully that's all making some sense. And then finally, of course, we can go ahead and select multiple rows and multiple columns and so on. And so to do so, we just M1 and then of course rows first. So we can do like a C one and three. So that's combined rows running three. We're gonna go ahead and see. And then we'll also look at two through four and run it real quick. So now we have Nathan and Amanda test two, three, and four, and their results just like that. Of course, we could go ahead and use names if we want to, and any other ways you wanna create vectors to go ahead and sort your data. So all the same rules still apply when selecting multiples. It's just now you're throwing in values for the row as well as values for the column. So very, very simple stuff. And once you click around a little bit, like it becomes like second nature. You're like, okay, I want this and this and you run it real quick. And when you do that, you realize it shoots out a vector. So you're like, oh shoot, I need to go ahead and do my drop equals to F in order to get a matrix. So now I'm seeing that it's Nathan and he's got these scores on these tests and so on. So again, it becomes second nature when you start playing around with it. And it's quite easy and intuitive to navigate these matrices and create subsets and all that type of stuff. And, and finally, just, just to put a little bow on this thing. You can of course save these subsets to, for analysis or something later on. So if you wanna be like M2 is, and store it as this right here, 
run that real quick. And now if you call M2, you have that matrix saved and you can go ahead and use it, you know, and reference it and all that type of stuff. So that's really it for subsets for matrices. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.